Hello everyone, how's it going? This is a review of chapter 1127 of One Piece. This week we have a really great chapter of One Piece. It's been a long time since we have had a chapter like this, where it's almost an entire chapter of the Straw Hats just interacting with each other and their environment, without any cutaways to a different location. Without further ado, let's get right into the chapter now. But before we get into the actual chapter, we need to talk about the cover story, where we see that apparently Inu Arashi is now the daimyo of Kuri, and it appears that he is also concerned about the disappearances slash kidnappings that are happening in One Currently. Honestly, I'm starting to get pretty interested in these disappearances now as well. Just what is going on in Wano? Getting into the actual chapter, we see a brief scene of the giants being confused by the weird stuff that seems to be happening in Melbaf. Although as we will find out later, all of these weird occurrences are of course because of the straw hats. We start the main portion of the chapter off by continuing where we left off at the end of the last chapter with Nami alone in some sort of weird castle-like area, where we see that Nami has been electrocuting some giant bees with the help of Zeus. We see that Nami is panicking as you would expect her to do in this type of scenario. She starts calling out for the other straw hats to come and save her, where she says that she would also settle for Usopp, which made me laugh. We also see that uh, Nami appears to be extremely confused about this situation, saying that she doesn't even remember changing her clothes, also wondering if this is all a dream. But then she hears Usopp's voice calling for her, and when she starts heading towards the voice, she trips and we see that the ground seems to have a very Lego-like appearance. She then runs into a massive porcupine that starts chasing after her, because she startled it by suddenly screaming. While she is running away from the porcupine, she finally finds Usopp, only to see that he's already being almost eaten by a massive cat. He asks her for help, and Nami retorts by saying that he is supposed to be helping her, which brings back memories of one of my favorite scenes in Skypiea. Nami wonders if they are in some kind of castle of monsters, before using her climb attack to zap the porcupine with the help of Zeus. As she is doing that, both her and the porcupine fall off the ledge onto the cat, which also gets zapped as a result, but thankfully it released Zeus up from its mouth before that happened, otherwise he would have also gotten zapped too. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not enough to take out the cat, and it chases after them. During this chase, Nami asks Usopp what he knows about the current situation, to which he replies that he only knows as much as her. He woke up here and found himself in this situation, but he mentions the alcohol, which reminds Nami that that one giant mentioned that the alcohol they were drinking can cause hallucinations. This is an important point to remember throughout this whole chapter. They end up at a dead end where Usopp has a thought that if they are in fact hallucinating, then the cat that is chasing them may not be real, but he finds out the hard way that the cat is very much real. This is a to Nami, Usopp and the cat falling down to the ground. Now we see Nami on the ground with, with an unconscious Usopp. They are surrounded by skeletons, yo ho ho, but none of them are blue though. Also, the cat has apparently been replaced by a lion now. Nami also tries to use Usopp as a shield. <laughs> now, thankful for Nami and Usopp, the monster trio are here to save them now. The three of them team up to take out the lion in a nice callback moment to when they took out that giant lizard thing in Alabasta. The lion also turns back into a cat when it's defeated. And of course, we see that while Nami and Usopp have been struggling and having a really bad time, the monster trio have been seemingly having the time of their lives in this situation, with Nami even questioning why they are so comfortable in this situation. All in all, this was a great chapter of One Piece, with a lot of the kind of interactions between the Straw Hats that have been sorely lacking in the post time skip era of the series. I think the last time we saw such interactions may have been all the way back in Whole Cake Island, and even that was only Luffy, Nami and Chopper, and Carrot was also there I guess. Speaking of Chopper, where is he right now? Because I don't remember him being on the ship at the end of the last chapter, and he is not here either. I am really curious about his whereabouts, especially since that might have to do with the weirdness throughout this chapter, with the whole hallucination hypothesis. The reason being the absurdness of the situation, as well as the various inconsistencies throughout the chapter, such as the character's clothing constantly changing, and Luffy even misnamed his technique calling Elephant Gun a Gear 4 technique when it's actually a Gear 3 technique, and also the fact that a lot of scenes in this chapter seem to be callbacks to scenes from earlier arcs, which begs the question, if the events of this chapter are a hallucination, how much of it is real? Is it all a hallucination? Or are only some parts of it an hallucination? Really interesting to think about if you ask me. Regardless of if it was an hallucination or not, it was it was really fun to see the original five members of the Straw Hats goofing around after such a long time. It really made me nostalgic for the East Blue Saga. Once again, this was a really great chapter of One Piece and I will see you next time. Bye bye.